Welcome to recording number two of many pre-recorded information sessions held by the Piedmont Triad Regional Council Area Agency on Aging. Since March 13, 2020, 2020, our region, Region G, entered the beginning of a national pandemic for older adults and caregivers. As we now start 2022, we are hopeful that this pandemic will soon be behind us and together we can make a regional recovery. Today I, announced the ability, today, I announced the availability of funding provided by the American Rescue Plan of 2021, ARPA. ARPA funds provide a unique opportunity to consider the needs and service delivery that have the potential to respond to unmet needs of older adults and family caregivers. The PTRC AAA is procuring and allocating these funds by taking, a, by taking a regional approach based on the priorities established by the North Carolina Division of Aging and Adult Services. Service match is not required and funds will remain available until expended or until September 30th, 2024, whichever comes first. This announcement today is for nutrition services, grocery bags, and produce bags. Funding services, funding serves individuals age 60 years of age or older. So now I will turn it over to Joe Jugans, who will share the request for application. Hello, and I hope you are all well. As Adrian just announced, um, I this request for application is for grocery bags and produce bags grants. The, the request for application may be found on a, a tab on the Aging Services webpage entitled American Rescue Plan Act Regional Recovery. As Adrian mentioned, the project period for this funding is February 1st, 2022 through September 30th, 2024. All ARPA funds must be obligated by September 30th of 2024. The PTRC AAA is making ARPA nutrition services, grocery bags, and produce bags mini grants available to serve people aged 60 years of age or older. Priority consideration will be given to proposals that address the needs of older adults who are underserved, underrepresented, and or part of a rural population or food desert. You will notice throughout um, this request for application that there are, are a number of items that have double asterisks in front of them. This refers uh, to the Federal Major Disaster Declaration. And if the Federal Major Disaster de Declaration ends before a fully executed contract is in place, these flexibilities will be void and not allowed. And basically, th the flexibilities granted under the Federal Major Disaster Declaration are what this grant is all about, grocery bags and produce bags. We are hopeful that uh, we will be able to make allocations and have contracts fully executed before the Federal Major Disaster Declaration ends. Um, we have no idea when the Federal Major Disaster Declaration ends. The Division of Aging and Adult Services have told us that we will receive um, notification of between 30 to 60 days prior to the end date of the federal MDD. So we will certainly uh, keep all of our providers uh, abreast of the uh, status of the federal major disaster declaration but as long as the contracts are fully executed before the end of the federal MDD, then this grant funding 
is able to continue until it is expended or until September 30th of 2024, whichever comes first. You'll notice that there uh, on the um, request for application, which I suggest you have in front of you, that eligibility grocery bags and produce bags requirements are that grocery bags and or produce bags can only contain food items. Grocery bags and or produce bags cannot contain donated food and produce bags may contain fresh fruits and vegetables provided either through local farmers markets or grocery stores. The eligibility for grocery bags and produce bags is simply people age 60 or older. Income is not used in determining eligibility. Other programmatic requirements for grocery bags and produce bags. Uh, ARPA Nutrition Services grocery bags and produce bags funding also includes non-unit reimbursement for personal protective equipment packaging supplies, and other unique items that allow organizations to provide grocery bags and or produce bags. The reporting and documentation requirements are that a client registration, uh, the, the DAS 101 short form must be completed for each eligible client receiving grocery bags and or produce bags. The distribution of gro grocery bags and produce bags must be tracked on a specially designed form and all ARPA nutrition services, grocery bags and produce bags funds must be accounted for separately in the service providers accounting records. The cost computation requirements for grocery bags and produce bags under this grant is that an accurately completed cost computation form will be required of all grant awardees and the cost computation forms calculate the unit cost per grocery bag and produce bag provided. Reimbursement for grocery bags and produce bags. ARPA Nutrition Services grocery bags and produce bags funds are handled through a reimbursement system. Let me emphasize that again. These funds are handled through a reimbursement system. Services provided by ARPA Nutrition Services grocery bags and produce bags funds will be reimbursed on a monthly basis through the state's aging resource management system, otherwise affectionately known as ARMS. Reimbursement is dependent upon accurate reporting of service data, and there will be a reimbursement form that will be required for, for funded uh, providers to receive reimbursement for the grocery bags and produce bags funded through this grant. Please note on the RFA that there is information about monitoring. Monitoring is conducted uh, of these funds according to a timeline established by the Division of Aging and Adult Services. There is important information about confidentiality and security, as well as information about record retention and disposition. Since these are federal funds, uh, record uh, retention and dis position is uh, done according to a schedule that is posted. There is a link to that. It's, it's from the controller's office at the Department of Health and Human Services in North Carolina. And uh, this schedule uh, gives you a timetable as to when records may be properly disposed of for this grant. Again, again, as has been mentioned, um, the project period is February 1st, 2022 through September 30th of 2024. Just a reminder that PTRC AAA reserves the right to reject any or all applications 
waive technicalities and to be the sole judge of suitability of the services for their intended use. And further specifically reserves the right to make the award in the best interest of the PTRC AAA regional program. And also, as I have previ had previously said, if the federal major disaster declaration ends before a fully exe executed contract is in place, these flexibilities, which include grocery bags and produce bags, will be void and not allowed. The next section of the RFA is submitting an application for these grant funds. Three copies of the request for application with original signatures must be submitted to the PTRC AAA 1398 Carrollton Crossing Drive, Kernersville, North Carolina, 27284. Attention Gwen Shields by Tuesday, January 25th at 4 p.m. Applications received after this date and time will not be considered for funding. So if you are mailing in applications, those applications need to arrive by January 25th through the postal mail. If you are hand delivering uh, the, the copies of the request for application, they also need to arrive by 4 p.m. on Tuesday, January 25th. And I suggest if you're going to hand deliver that you contact Gwen Shields to inform her that you are hand delivering and to make sure that someone is here at the PTRC office to take those documents from you. With the ever-changing environment of the pandemic, uh, we, we are not quite sure the status of, web, of the office, uh, uh, whether it is open, when, when it'll be open. So it is best to let Gwen know uh, of your plans to hand deliver. Proposals that must meet PTRC, the proposals that best meet PTRC Area Agency on Aging expectations for service delivery will be selected and applications will be scored based on their completeness and their description of intent to provide services. All questions regarding this RFA must be submitted in writing by Tuesday, January 18th at 4 p.m. to Gwen Shields. Her email address is in the RFA. And after such time, until, a pro until projects are awarded, applicants are prohibited from contacting PTRC AAA staff regarding any issue relating to these funds or the application process. Failure to respond to any requirements outlined in the RFA or failure to enclose completed copies of the required documents may disqualify the application. Following this information, there is a block with the timeline um, contained within it. You'll see the announcement of funding availability as Thursday, January 6th. Then the final date to submit questions, Tuesday, January 18th at 4 p.m. Applications are due Tuesday, January 25th at 4 p.m. And contracts will be begin to be awarded no later than mid-February 2022 following PTRC board approval. Uh, evaluation criteria, the PTRC AAA has developed a scoring tool to evaluate applications. The tool will be available on the PTRC website under the specific nutrition services links. And there is a link in the RFA uh, to those nutrition services. Again, pr uh, priority consideration will be given to proposals that address the needs 
of older adults who are underserved, underrepresented, and or part of a rural population or food desert. Available ARPA funds. There will be five mini grants of up to $30,000 each. Um, all expenditures must be reasonable, necessary, and justifiable. All funds must be spent on activities related to ARPA nutrition services, grocery bags, and produce bags. An organization may submit applications to provide grocery bags and produce bags in multiple locations, and each application will be reviewed separately. Requested grant amounts cannot exceed $30,000. What follows next is a reminder about monitoring, which will be conducted. And then comes the actual request for application. Again, the due date is Tuesday, January 25th at 4 p.m. Just a couple items to highlight on this application. The full legal name of the organization is required. A tax ID is required and a valid DUNS number is required. And information about the DUNS number was uh, distributed far and wide uh, before, right before the um, holiday break in December. Also under required information, you are asked to submit one copy of your organization's most recent financial statements, audited or unaudited. For those organizations submitting unaudited financial statements, a completed state grant certification and sworn statement, and a completed schedule of receipts and expenditures are also required. And these two documents are available on the website under each of the nutrition services links. Additional information may be requested. What follows then are the application questions. There are five questions. Word count is not, is not limited. And then follows a uh, request for application budget. I want to stress with this budget to be certain to include all items that your organization will be seeking reimbursement for in this RFA budget. Be sure to include all items, because as it is noted, upon award of the grant, an official budget will be completed using the required cost computation forms. However, the cost computation forms will be checked with the request for application budget, and only those items listed on the request for application budget will be allowed to be included on the cost computation forms. What follows then are, are, is the actual budget. Again, with the specific items, we aren't looking for pinpoint accuracy. We're not looking for pinpoint accuracy in the dollar amount, but we do want to make sure that all items for reimbursement are listed in this RFA budget. Following the budget, there is another reminder about if the federal major disaster declaration ends before a fully executed contract is in place. Basically, the flexibilities of grocery bags and produce bags will be void and not allowed. Please read the American Rescue Plan Act bid certification statement. And then finally, please execute the RFA, being sure to include proper name, authorized signature, title, and date. Again, if there are any questions, they may be emailed to Gwen Shields. Uh, her email address was included in the RFA, and all questions need to be submitted 
by Tuesday, January 18th at 4 p.m. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. That was a lot of information. I do hope that you all take time to uh, look it over in detail and come up with your questions and email by January 18th. That will be so important. <laughs> Um, again, this is the second of many free recordings that we will do for ARPA funds. So stay tuned for more and certainly reach out if you need to. Thanks.